Then they marched and gathered, by hill and valley, going ever by tunnel or under dark, until around and beneath the great mountain Gundabad of the north. Where was their capital, a vast host was assembled, ready to sweep down in time of storm, unawares upon the south. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today, I bring you an extra video on the rather short history of Gundabad, as the Lord of the Rings Online has recently launched an expansion pertaining to Gundabad. A link to it is in the description. This isn't sponsored or anything, but I really love Lotra and figure it is a good time to explore what little canon lore we have about this mountain. I also suppose that, since I'll probably be looking up information on it while playing, I might as well make a video about it. There will be related and helpful articles and videos in the description for more information. My friends, thank you all so much for being here. Let's begin our tale. The story and renown of Gundabad truly begins with the awakening of the eldest father of the dwarves, Durin I, Durin the Deathless, in Gundabad, sometime after the awakening of the elves during the Years of the Trees, in 1050. Gundabad seems to be the Khazdul name of the mountain, and though we can derive the root Gundu, which means underground hall, that's about it. As it is with the enigmatic language of the dwarves, none can tell the vastness of what their language and many of its words mean. Gundabad was at the very northern end of the Misty Mountains, and was the westernmost mountain of the Grey Mountains, and was the easternmost mountain of the Angmar Mountains, thus connecting all three mountain ranges. It seems although Gundabad was one mountain, it had three peaks. Durin indeed awoke here, making it a hallowed place of the dwarves, but he would soon leave Gundabad after his awakening, to wander until he would find a place to carve his kingdom with his folk, Khazad Dûm in the south. However, Gundabad still remained important to the dwarves, and would be one of the many places where dwarves would continue to gather, at least in the early ages. But it seems no large city or fortress was built there, by the dwarves at least. Rather, I personally view it more as a religious site for the dwarves, and perhaps building upon it or in it may have desecrated it in some way. But that is merely speculation on my part. Perhaps they did set up some sort of hall, but no grand city or kingdom there. And so it remained in the hands of the dwarves until the middle of the Second Age, as during the War of the Elves and Sauron in the year 1697, the dwarves of khazad hindered Sauron's forces from the rear as they pursued Elrond's forces to the north, and then the dwarves retreated into their city. Sauron could not defeat the dwarves and pass through the doors of Durin, and so he told his orcs to harry and hinder the dwarves wherever they might be found, which in and of itself would cause further hatred between dwarves and orcs for ages. And so, rather than attempting to fight the dwarves in khazad the orcs would attack their holy site shortly after, during the first sacking of Gundabad, and the orcs would take up mastery of the mountain for millennia after, greatly insulting the dwarves, especially those of Durin's folk. Perhaps during the orcs' time in Gundabad, over the Second and Third Ages, they would build up some sort of stronghold or fortification within Gundabad. Maybe it was akin to Goblin Town, even. In the beginning of the Third Age, Gundabad's location would be within Angmar's territory, connecting the Witch King's lands in Eriador to the lands of Rovanion, and surely those orcs would bolster the armies of the Nazgul during the Angmar War. But the dwarves did not forget their holy mountain especially after the fall of khazad in the mid-Third Age and the coming of Smaug to Erebor. After the death of Thror by the hands of the orc Azog, the Great War of the Dwarves and Orcs broke out, in which all seven clans of the dwarves came together to fight against the orcs. Sometime between 2793 and 2799 of the Third Age, as the dwarves systematically wiped out the strongholds of the orcs in the Misty Mountains and drove them deeper into their holes, they did a second sacking of Gundabad, led by King Thrain II, and they wiped the orcs from their ancient holy place. But the scope of the war was large, and pertained more to the orcs in Moria than those elsewhere, and so even after the war ended, orcs gathered once more in and around Gundabad. Thus, in 2941, when Thorin's company journeyed through the Misty Mountains and slew the nearby Goblin King, the orcs, wolves, and bats of Gundabad gathered near the mountain for vengeance, under the command of Bulg, who is the son of Azog, the orc commander who had been slain by Dane Ironfoot during the war. And so, from the north, these forces came down upon Erebor, the Lonely Mountain, after it was reclaimed by the dwarves, and this began the Battle of Five Armies. But due to the alliance of elves, men, and dwarves, these orcs were all either slain or driven back in defeat, and could not take the mountain. And so, even during the late Third Age, and likely early Fourth Age, Gundabad remained in the hands of some few orcs who feared the world of the free peoples outside. 
Perhaps, just as Durin VII would reclaim khazad he yet also reclaimed Gundabad, where his earliest namesake had once awoken, for surely the dwarves that remained in Middle-earth would not let their holy mountain stay in the hands of orcs for too much longer. And so, perhaps in the later ages it remained a hallowed site of the dwarves, known only to them and the loremasters who had studied the knowledge of Durin's folk in the later ages. Thus we come to the end of our tale on Mount Gundabad. From this tale we see that even places of ceremony and tradition have power, and they are worth protecting. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this extra video on Gundabad. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on Gundabad? Let me know in the comments below. Gundabad is an interesting place with a relatively small amount of lore, and I wonder if it is because of the frame narrative and the secrecy of the dwarves about sacred things that we know so little about it. Also, if you're interested, please check out Lotro's new Gundabad expansion, link in the description below. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Merton, John Hume, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Quantum Catalyst, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, Reese Jenkins, and Adam Petrolik. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you again on Sunday with a video on the epic character history of Thorin Oakenshield. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.